Mr. President, thank you for joining us. Uh, we're, we're here at the third annual CGI America. You're working with business and political leaders uh, to find ways to create economic growth right now. What's a commitment that you're really excited about that you've had happen here? We had this year a, a new commitment from a number of Native American tribes to join together to pool their resources to generate electricity from wind, feed it into the grid, and earn money for the tribes. Hmm. Uh, the reason this is important to me is that most people don't know it, but the poorest Americans are still Native Americans who live on tribal lands without access to casinos. And all of those, at least west of the Mississippi, have enormous capacity to generate solar and wind energy, but they haven't been able to organize themselves so that they can guarantee a cash flow stream that would enable them then to build, use the cash to invest in their areas and diversify their economies. So this is really the first big commitment we've had that I think has the promise to help people that live on tribal lands actually use their capacity to generate, in this case, wind energy to diversify their own economies and build a different future for themselves. I think that's really important. It's also, frankly, a microcosm of a big problem that America and other countries face, which is how to put an economic strategy in place that will help very rural areas as well as densely packed urban areas. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about it. I don't know what will happen for sure, but. I mean, I know the windmills will put up and they'll work and that'll work fine. But whether this will be the beginning of a <clears throat> different economic model, I can't say. But I hope it will be because that's one of the things we try to do. I'm excited about the St. Bernard Project, which is going to put up housing that will be more resistant to tornadoes and hurricanes and floods in Queens and New York, in Joplin, Missouri, mm -hmm. and in New Orleans as a model housing because there's going to be a huge movement in the years ahead, I think driven by insurance companies primarily, yeah. for us to build, rebuild, and remodel all of our structures to make them more resilient. Mayor Bloomberg, you may have seen, proposed, I think, a $19.5 billion plan just to make New York better able to resist mm -hmm. the destructive impacts of rising seawaters over the next 30 years. So I'm excited about that because I think most people need models. They can say, I could do that. I can afford that. We can manage this. So I think that's a very good thing, too. Well, you mentioned wind energy. Just moments ago, I, I hosted a panel on energy, and we talked a lot about all the alternatives out there right now and the importance of it in terms of weaning ourselves off oil and what it means for our relationship with the Middle East. Uh, what are your thoughts on Syria right now? And given the news of chemical weapons that we just learned about, do you think that we need to be involved there? What would you advise? Well, we have been involved. We've been supporting the rebels in various ways, with intelligence and in other ways. And the, uh, the White House announced today that they, because of the chemical weapons discovery, and I think because of the more overt and aggressive involvement of Iran and their, the troops they support from Hezbollah, mostly coming out of Lebanon, that they're going to do more. And I think that it's not clear yet exactly who will do what, partly because the president wants to talk to the other people in the G8 about it, which I think is a good thing. Mm -hmm. And they're going to meet in the next few days in Ireland. And also because the logistics of getting weapons into the area are somewhat complicated and risky. So, for example, if, we, if they decide to take them in through Jordan, they've got to secure the site. The Jordanians are already vulnerable enough because they have hundreds of thousands of Syrian refugees there. Mm -hmm. But I think on balance, that's the right thing to do. I don't think that we should... Uh, send troops there, but I don't think we should stay where we are. I think we should do more because... When you say do more? Well, I think the General Idris asked for a very specific set of weapons, and the United States supports him mm -hmm. 
It's one of the rebel leaders we have supported and feel good about. Uh, and uh, the administration announced they were going to send more weapons today. So I, I don't know enough about the details to go beyond that, except I think that if you look at what's going on, you've got Iran trying to dominate the region. You've got uh, Iran trying to inflame us, the Sunni Shia rift instead of trying to work out <clears throat> arrangements where it can be managed. And you've got this internal conflict in Syria, which may make it like Lebanon was in the 1970s for an unlimited period of time. And then it, and it destabilizes Lebanon. When the Lebanese, those of us who are old enough to remember how Lebanon was all torn up in the 70s, when they resolved it, they, they have a constitution in Lebanon that I think we ought to talk about. Because one of the things that we're all concerned about in the Arab Spring is that, okay, we get an election and the people with the most votes win, and then nothing else about democracy is guaranteed. Elections are more than majority rule. It's minority rights, shared decision-making, protection of individual rights, the rule of law. It takes sometimes a very long time to get that. It took us a long time. It took us a long time to eliminate slavery, a long time to give women the vote, a long time to get rid of the last vestiges of racial discrimination. But in the modern world, the only way to short circuit is if you live in a complex society like Lebanon, Syria, or Iraq, is to ensure that everybody can participate in government. So in the Lebanese system, you typically have a Sunni prime minister, a Shia speaker of the legislature, and a Christian president. And there, you know, you have the Maronites, you have the Druze, you have the, Sina, the Shia and the Sunni, and, and Kurds, a big Kurdish population in Syria. So we can, I don't think we can afford not to at least be on the side of the angels here, that we want all these people to be treated right, and we want an end to a government that has been responsible now for about 90,000 deaths. So I think that it, I feel good about the announcement, and I think we should wait and see what the details are. You all will get it all. You'll figure it out. But the administration is, is right to be a little circumspect about how they're going to get these weapons in and what they're going to do.